When Adobe Captivate 8 was released, Adobe decided to reset sort of the interface and the look and feel of Adobe Captivate, um, favoring more of a clean, simple interface, which is great. I'm all for the democratization of e-learning software. But one of the disadvantages of not switching to a pro workspace is that you end up with a lot of your parameters and features hidden from view. Uh, I was reminded of this this afternoon when I was providing some instruction to one of my clients. And they were looking for the ability to adjust something, but they just couldn't find it. Let me show you what it is that they were struggling with. I'll start off with just a blank project here to illustrate this point. So in this case here, I'm, I'm using the default interface uh, much as it would have been in Adobe Captivate 8, Adobe Captivate 9, and of course now uh, Captivate 2017 release. Uh, you'll see, of course, your toolbar across the top here, your film strip, your timeline is collapsed, and there are icons for your library and your properties uh, panel. And you can bring those up by clicking on those items. Incidentally, you also have this workspace drop down menu here, and really all you can do is reset the classic workspace, and that's all you're given access to. So in this case here, let me open up my properties panel and I'm just going to switch this to a blank slide and I'm going to add the type of interaction my client was working with. They were working with a click box to provide feedback to their users. And of course, if I open up my timeline, I can see the duration that the click box appears on the timeline, but that's it. None of these captions are showing up on the timeline. And that was the thing that uh, my particular client was struggling with. You know, certainly you can select the, uh, the caption itself, take a look at the properties panel. Is there anything there? Uh, no, just really formatting is available under options. Maybe it's there. Nope. Uh, just sizing and, of course, the ability to add audio. And that's probably okay. It, currently it shows for about three seconds. Uh, you know, if the caption reads something like correct or try again, three seconds is probably enough time. But if you have a much longer detailed explanation here, uh, three seconds is probably not enough time for your end users to read that caption. So how do you do it? Well, um, it's actually done through the timing panel. Uh, and again, if you unless you looked or opened up that particular panel, you wouldn't find it. So um, what I'm going to do at this point, I'm actually going to close this project down. I'm not going to save it or anything like that. And I'm just going to go into the edit drop down menu and go under preferences and show you an ability to give you greater control over what you see when you're working with the Adobe Captivate interface. So let's click on the general settings uh, category of the preferences. And the checkbox that I'm looking for is this one here. It's called Enable Custom Workspaces slash Panel Undocking. And of course, there's a little note here. You will need to restart Captivate for this to take effect. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to add that item, click OK. And then what we'll do is we'll restart Captivate and show you where the, what some people call the Pro Workspace can be beneficial to you. So let's just restart Captivate here, start it back up. So when I start um, a new installation of Adobe Captivate, there's a few things that I set up by default. I'm just going to open up a blank project so we have something to look at. Um, the very first thing I do, or most of what I do, is to work from the window drop down menu. But let's first of all take a look at a couple things. I want to point out that the properties and the library icons are now missing from that toolbar. That's because you're going to access those from over here. So here's my properties panel. We'll open that up. And uh, the library is right there as well. So those are available. And once you've opened those, they'll stay open. They'll remain open. And uh, you can create a, a series of different workspaces. Remember how I showed you the classic drop-down menu here? All that was available was to choose the classic option. 
but you of course depending on the work uh, workflow that you are dealing with you can set up different workspaces uh, for example i like to have a special workspace just for entering in closed captioning so i've set up one of those in my regular installation of Captivate 2017. And you can create those new workspaces and also manage them from this little menu here, which you can access from the classic dropdown or the workspace dropdown menu here. Um, the other things that you might want to have open, like I do, I like to have my timing panel available. I also like to undock. Now remember that checkbox did mention undocking, panel undocking. I like to undock my properties panel and the reason being is I like to dock it in its own location separate from all my other panels. I've started doing this in the last year or so. I think I saw someone else do it and I thought well that's uh, interesting. I wonder why they do that and after a day or so of trying out it became very clear to me uh, why they do it and I'll show you an example of that. So again that client I had this afternoon uh, they were working with a click box and with feedback items on there. With the timing panel open, if I click on that caption, not only do I, I have access to all of my items within my properties panel, but I also see those timing elements and I can very quickly and easily discover additional parameters that are available to you once you've set up this workspace. And of course, there's other things as well, like I'm going to set up the, uh, in this case here, the timeline along the bottom, and I might set up the notes and might have my master slide and so on. All that stuff will be persistent. So the next time I open this project or create a new project, all of these panels will be in place the way I want them. So it's really useful for setting up uh, your Adobe Captivate interface to, first of all, give you access to all of these parameters, but it also increases your ability to discover new features within Adobe Captivate as well. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.